My name is Benedict Kersen, and I will show you in this episode how I post-produce the images I captured on film in the suburbs of Lisbon. I received from the lab the previews of the images I shot in Shellwash and Marvilla, and I'm very happy with the results. I was not really expecting this because the light was very harsh. Um, I shot in different times of the day, and some of them were a little bit more tricky than others. And when the films are coming back from the labs, I have a lot of boxes in my office that are piling up almost to the ceiling. And I put in a very neat way the films into um, sheets, either with crystal paper or plastic, so they don't get damaged by dust and they don't get scratched. It's very important because of course, the more damage they are, the more work there is, and the more work there is, and the less time you have to shoot. So it's better to be very neat, very orderly. Since the beginning, it's a lot less work for the future. Then what I'd like to do is also to the information that I wrote down into the box of the film as I was shooting on the ground, I write them onto the sheet. That's why I like to work with crystal paper because you can actually write on it. Plastic is more transparent, it's less visible, it's less readable. So for me, what's really the best is crystal, um, crystal paper sheets. Those information and the negative needs to stay like this for the rest of your life. It cannot change, it cannot be removed, it cannot be separated. Otherwise, you just run the risk, first of all, of forgetting where the pictures have been taken. You run the risk of forgetting the dates. Um, and you run the risk of forgetting what the pictures are. Because if you shoot a lot, if you are a prolific photographer, uh, your brain cannot remember everything. Uh, it's rare when I forget, but it might happen. So let's not risk anything and just be very... Orderly. So today I'm going to edit a portfolio of these pictures to be able to introduce myself as a photographer to various architects here in Lisbon. I've been for many years living in Africa and now I'm really between Africa, Nigeria and Lisbon and I would like to develop my photographic activity uh, in Portugal. And I believe that to do architectural photography, which is really interesting to me, can be one of the way I can create a business out of it. Every roll of film has 12 frames, not one more, not one less. So it's an incredible constraint because it seems very little, especially if you are used to shoot with digital, limitless amount of frame, you know, just little cards. But this constraint can be an incredible asset uh, as you are shooting. It allows you to be more focused, carefully look with your own eyes before you actually put your eye into the Viewfinder, uh, it requires full mindfulness. I'm very pleased to see those pictures. They were taken in the morning, so you can really see the difference between morning, which is more bluish, crystal clear, and these images, for instance, where the shadow of the end of the day are already invading the frame and creating new volumes with their architecture. And obviously the picture being a lot more golden and a lot warmer. Uh, so these pictures were taken in shellage. Obviously there is a great game with the colors and the structure. So I looked really carefully both, as we said, oh. I looked at the details, but I also looked at the environments. This, for instance, typically is a frame that is more environmental which allows the viewer to really recognize the fact that it's a building, that it's constructed. Um, the sky occupies almost half of the image, but in an image like this, it's the details that sells the fact that it's a building, is this tiny rusted window. The sky is very um, discreet here and almost mirror the blue of, the, of this terrace of this balcony. Next role, this is a really good example of one of the things I absolutely love about architectural photography, is when you lose the scale of the building and the work of the architects become strictly visual and almost become like a piece of art. 
the light at this moment was really giving all the volume to the cylinder. Uh, and you can see very clearly the lines, but you don't know which one are being built. You don't know which one are holding in the air and are suspended. You just lose track of what is, re what is real and what is the scale. And that's one of the magical parts of architectural photography for me. Once I've edited the pictures uh, by either tagging them on the side like this or assigning them a special color, I click and drag onto Photoshop. I'm trying to understand what is going to be the, which element of the picture I'm going to try to enhance the most. Would it be possible to open a little bit the highlights? Would it be possible to open a little bit the mid-tones without losing too much color? And you can tell already, I remember very clearly this wall being pink, but because the time of the day was so warm and was so, the sun was so yellow, that the pink is transforming into this ochre color, which is really beautiful. I do very, very little on my own pictures. For professional prints, I prefer to work with, uh, at the lab and sit with uh, a technician who will apply layers after layers and doing, uh, do it very thoroughly. I'm not a professional in Photoshop. I just know what I'm looking at and what, I'm, what I would like the final result to be. Uh, also, since colors are very important for me, I like to also counterbalance a little bit what I have in my memory and what the screen shows me. So I remember very clearly that these walls were a little bit more magenta, uh, a little bit more pink than what I can see on my screen. It's a laptop, so again, it's not ideal. That's why it's so important for me for final prints or for exhibition to go and work with a calibrated screen in a lab, in a dark place, um, and help being helped by a technician. Because my eye, um, the eye and the way you see colors is completely subjective, and there is a lot of different um, layers in which uh, that can affect actually the colors and the final result. And what surprised me is that one of the elements that I managed to capture is really uh, the way that the architects create almost paintings or uh, tableau. So all the pictures, especially because they're in a square format, they really look like painting. And I try to mix, especially the one that doesn't have any sky. You just forget that it's an actual building, but you start really seeing the line and the structures. There is a, a very broad diversity of images, there are pictures of details that are really bordering abstraction. It's a, almost a tribute to contemporary art. So I'm very happy about this. And there are some pictures that are depicting the building more into the setting and its own environment. And I really think we have everything I need to uh, create a nice and beautiful story. When I looked at the when I looked at the contact sheet or the low res. I immediately identify the picture that very spontaneously I'm drawn to. I don't look too much into the details. What really matters, even in small size, is how visually my eyes will very spontaneously um, see that image or that image. This assignment was really exciting for me because it really allowed me to do something that I always try to do um, in my photography which is to bring the viewer to look at things that otherwise they wouldn't pay attention to. The neighborhood of Shellash and Marvilla allowed me to both enhance the importance of social housing, but also that it's possible to do this with a, a very high ground for aesthetic and uh, architectural principles. So all in all, I think it was a great combination and a great experience and also a great way to discover Lisbon in a completely different way.